Praise the Lord, dear brothers and sisters. Ebi, shall I proceed? Praise the Lord, dear brothers and sisters. I bring warm greetings from the saints at Jehovah Shama, Chennai, India. It's a great joy. It's a great privilege to join with you the blood bond children of God this morning to worship the Lord and to participate in the Lord's table and to minister the word of God. At this time, I want to say that uh, we are remembering very much all of you, especially brothers and sisters of Methani Mandram in New York. In our daily prayers, we remember all of you. And uh, also, we believe that you are praying for us. Thank you for all your love and concern for us. <clears throat> this morning, kindly turn to John's Gospel, chapter 15. And I'm going to read from verse 1 to verse 14. John's Gospel, chapter 15. From verse 1 onwards to 14. I am the true wine, and my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me. I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abideth in the vine, no more can he except you abide in me. Verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches, he that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If a man Abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so I have loved you. Continue you in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandment and abide in his love. These things I have spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, that your joy might be full. This is my commandment that you love one another as I loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. May a loving and living God bless the portion of the scripture that you have read together this, mo this morning and speak to us. Shall we pray? Loving Heavenly Father, in the name of our loving Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, we thank Thee for enabling us to gather around the Lord's table in the Lord's house, in the Lord's day, to worship Thee and to participate in the Lord's table, remembering Thy great love, Thy death and burial resurrection and Thy return. Lord, and also Lord, this morning, we pray that Thou may, Lord, speak to us from the throne of grace that we may hear Thy still small voice. Lord, Speak to us. There is fullness of joy in thy presence. Lord, enable us. We remember thy people in Bethany House of Worship in New York, our dear brother, our brother Tangavelu and sister, Lord Mrs. Tangavelu, and our dear children. Lord, we pray that thou may send them thy servant in his weakness and give him, Lord, extraordinary strength and power to serve you. Lord, we pray for Brother John and Sister John, 
and uh, his daughter, his mother, and Lord, take care of them. Lord, we remember A.B. and Sister A.B. and children, especially remember Danny, his future life partner, take care of him. Remember Jonathan, his wife, Rachel, and also his daughter, and study in Jonathan, and study, take care of them. The Lord, we pray for our dear brother Emmanuel and Mrs. Emmanuel and children. Lord, we remember our dear sister Ruth Ilangovan and also Joseph, Abigail and Suganti, all other children and grandchildren. Lord, also, Lord, we thank you and praise you and pray for all those brothers and sisters and children and people who are gathering and worshipping Lord in the Bethany House of Worship in New York. Take care of them. Lord, that's the time of uh, our meditation of the word. Without deed, nothing. May the Holy Spirit of God anoint us. We pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, John's Gospel, uh, chapter 13, 14, 15, 16, is a very, very important chapter in the Bible. Because in these chapters, we see the, the farewell message of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before going to the cross of Calvary, Lord Jesus Christ spoke these words. These are the last words of the Lord Jesus before going to the cross of Calvary. In this passage, in John's Gospel, chapter 15, what we are read from verse 1 to 14, these are the words the Lord Jesus Christ spoke to his beloved disciples. We must remember these words are spoken, spoken by our Lord Jesus to the disciples, to his disciples, to the believers, not for unbelievers. He has spoken these words, John's Gospel, chapter 15, verse 1 to 14, on the way to the Garden of Gethsemane from the upper room. In this uh, uh, passage, we read uh, the important picture of our Lord Jesus Christ and the believer. When verse 1, Jesus said, I am the true wine. My father is the husband man. I am the wine. You are the branches. Verse 5, He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. So, many, many of the images, many of the images of Lord Jesus Christ and the believers mentioned in the scripture emphasize the very important concept of our union with the Lord Jesus Christ and our communion with the Lord Jesus Christ and our relationship, living relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So there are many images in the scripture. The first image of Christ and the believer is we see he is the head of the church and we are the body of Christ. In Colossians chapter 1 Verse 18, we read, Apostle Paul said, He is the head of the body. Verse 18, He is the head of the body, the church. And all preeminence must be given to Him. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the head. He is our head. And we are His body. Only when the body is connected to the head, it can receive all blessings. In the same way, we must be connected to the head. The second image of Christ and the believer, we read in John's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 11, where Jesus said, I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd giveth his life to the sheep. There we see, Jesus Christ is our shepherd and we are his sheep. What a wonderful privilege it is. Our Lord Jesus Christ is our shepherd. 
He is not an ordinary shepherd. He is a good shepherd who laid down his life for, for our sins. He is our shepherd. He leads us to the green pastures and he takes us to the still waters. And he is with us. Even though we pass through the valley of the shadow of death, our good shepherd is with us. And his rod and his staff, they comfort us. And you surely goodness and mercy shall follow. Goodness and mercy shall follow all the days of our life. And we will dwell in the house of God forever. So he is our good shepherd and we are his sheep. The third image of Christ and believers we see here, see in Ephesians chapter 5, in verse 31, where we, Apostle Paul is telling, after telling about the husband and wife and children, he is telling this is a mystery. It is a mystery, the marriage relationship between husband and wife. He says, wives, subject to your husbands. Husbands, love your wife. So after telling this, he says, it is a mystery. That is, he is speaking about Christ and the church relationship. So Lord Jesus Christ is our bridegroom and we are his bride. One day, our Lord Jesus Christ, our heavenly bridegroom is going to come and he is going to meet the bride, our the church and we are going to be united with him forever in eternity. So he is our bridegroom. And we are his bride. And here, on John's Gospel, chapter 15, we see another picture of Lord Jesus Christ and the believer. He, here he says, I am the wine, verse 5. John's Gospel, chapter 15, verse 5. I am the wine, ye are the branches, and he that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. In this allegory, we see four important things. First of all, verse 1, I am the true wine, my father is the husbandman. So first thing is the husbandman, wine dresser. Father, God the Father is the wine dresser. What he does? Verse 2. What the husbandman, the wine dresser, dresses, does for the vineyard. Verse 2. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth much fruit. So we see here the action of the husbandman, wine dresser, God the Father. Every branch, every believer who bears not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it. Why? That it may bring forth more fruit. So the wine dresser purges or prunes the branch that beareth fruit, that it may bring more fruit. The purging or pruning is very, very important. When I was working in a government hospital in Nilgiri, my hospital is surrounded by uh, tea estate. And uh, every year, the owner of the tea estate used to prune the uh, tea plant. That means during during pruning, they cut the dead tissues, wooden and infected uh, branches and the wood of the uh, 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 tree plant. At the same time, also they cut extra growing uh, branches, other things, that uh, it may produce more fruit. So in the same way, our God, the Father, prunes us, purges us. That means... He cleanses us. How? 
there are two ways god the father purchases prunes us first of all he convicts our sin through the word of god that is what we read in verse 3 now you are clean through the word which i have spoken unto you word of god convicts our sin and cleanses us and keep us holy and maintain our relationship secondly god the father prunes us by allowing suffering in our lives that is one way one way of pruning or chastening cleansing the believer in hebrews chapter 12 verse 6 we read the chastening of god chastening of the father for whom the lord loveth he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth so the second way of pruning god the father is purging or chastening so god allows sometimes in our lives suffering sickness so to, to cleanse us to purge us god will allow uh, that uh, kind of suffering so during suffering we should not be discouraged during sickness or some problems or trials in our lives persecution in our lives we should not be discouraged but we should be encouraged because the word of god says all things work together for good for those who love him who are called according to his purpose what is the purpose of god in allowing suffering his purpose is that we should be conformed to the image of his son that is the purpose of god pruning pruning us purging us allowing suffering in our lives so lord may help us to encourage take encouragement from the word of god in this uh, allegory in this picture of vine and the branch we see four things first of all we see the husband man in verse 1 we see husband man so what he does verse 2 and 3 you have seen the second thing is verse 5 we see the vine verse 5 the vine secondly and uh, thirdly we see the branches and fourthly we see the fruit so verse 5 i am the vine the lord jesus christ said i am the vine there are three kinds of wine uh, written in the word of god the past wine is the nation of israel that we see in isaiah chapter 5 we see god is calling his nation his people as the vineyard the nation of israel is compared to a wine god redeemed them by his precious blood the blood of the lamb and led them for 40 years after crossing the red sea and god enabled to enable them to cross the jordan and god enabled them to inherit the promised land the land which flows milk and honey god gave them that land god transplanted them in the land of canaan and enabled them to enjoy the blessings of canaan but god expected to give a uh, good grapes but they gave wild grapes god expected them from them righteousness but god they they produced unrighteousness so my dear brothers and sisters god with a great purpose has redeemed us by his precious blood and he has chosen us before the foundation of the world jesus said you have not chosen me but i have chosen you out of the world god has chosen us god has redeemed us by his precious blood god has chosen us before you are formed in our mother's womb ordained us to be his servants to be his people god has blessed us with all spiritual blessings according to ephesians ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 blessed be god and the father of our lord jesus christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessing in heavenly place in christ jesus 
So God has so much blessed us and is expecting to produce good grape, good grapes. But many times, many of us give wild grape, bitter grape. So my dear brothers and sister, we must examine our lives and set right things before God. So the first kind of wine is the nation of Israel. The second kind of wine is recorded in Revelation chapter 14 verse 19. There we read the wine of the earth. The wine of the earth represent the Gentile world system is going to be punished and judged when the Lord Jesus Christ comes. They are they represent the wine of the earth in Revelation chapter 14 verse 19 represent the unbelievers the Gentile world system who do not believe Jesus, who object the gospel. And this wine of the earth is waiting for destruction when the judgment comes, when the Lord Jesus Christ comes to the earth. And we should not be like the uh, wine of the earth. We should repent of our sin and be born again, washed by this precious blood and clothed with the garment of salvation. And our names must be written in the book of the Lamb. So, my dear brothers and sisters, we should not be a wine of the earth waiting for the destruction. The third kind of wine is the uh, true wine, the Lord Jesus Christ. Said in John's Gospel, chapter 15, verse 1, I am the true wine. Our Lord Jesus Christ is a true wine. Our Lord Jesus is a true wine and we are the branches. And this uh, picture of wine and the branches parallels to the head and the body. Head and the body having living, living relationship. Wine and the branch also has got the living relationship. So our relationship with Christ is a living relationship. We have a living relationship with our living Savior, the Lord Jesus. And we belong to Him. How much? 100%. As the wife is 100% belong to the husband, as the husband is uh, belong to the wife 100%, as the wife is 100% belong to the husband, we who are bride, we are 100% belong to our Lord Jesus because he has purchased us by his precious blood. So, my dear brothers and sisters, Lord Jesus is the true wine. Then, we see the branches. In verse 5, Jesus said, I am the wine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. When we look at the, the word branches, you are the branches. The branch we are compared to a believer. A born again believer is compared to a branch. Of itself, branch is weak and, and is useless. If the branch do not abide with the wine, it is useless. It cannot bear fruit. Only when the branch abides joined with the wine, it can draw life from the wine, nourishment from the wine, strength from the wine. Only then it can live. Of itself, branch has no life. It has to draw the life from the wine. In the same way, the more we abide with Christ, we can draw his life and we can draw the nourishment for our spiritual life and we can draw strength for our spiritual life. Our communion, our fellowship with the Christ is very, very important. The word abide is repeated 11 times in this passage. John's Gospel, chapter 15, verse 5. 
Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. The word abide, that means to keep in fellowship. To keep in fellowship with Christ, so that his life may work in and through us to bear fruit. We must keep in fellowship with the Lord Jesus. As soon as we are born again, we are placed in Christ. Our position is in Christ. In Ephesians, the Apostle Paul is telling this, this word often, repeat often, you are in Christ. You are blessed in Christ. You are elevated, seated in Christ. So our position is in Christ. See, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, in Christ. Our blessings are heavenly and in, in Christ. And also, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 says, He hath raised us up together, made us sit together in heavenly places, in Christ. So, when we are born again, our place is in, in Christ. We must stay on in that place. We must uh, have in, in touch with the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the meaning of the word abide. How do you know that uh, a person, a believer is uh, abiding uh, in Christ? How do you know that? There are seven evidences to show that uh, that brother, that sister is abiding in Christ, abiding with Christ. The first evidence is he will bear fruit. The believer, the Christian who abides with Christ, who have a constant touch with Christ, who have constant fellowship with Christ, he will bear fruit. Verse 5. He that abideth in me, I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. That is the first evidence to say that brother or sister is abiding with Christ, bearing fruit. A fruitless branch is useless. In the same way, a fruitless believer is a useless believer. So we must bear fruit. The second evidence to say that brother or sister is abiding in Christ is he will bear, he will experience the pruning, the purging effect of God the Father. Is verse 2 we see he is the branch, every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it. He will experience the purging, pruning effect. The third evidence is verse 7. John's Gospel, chapter 15, verse 7. If ye abide in me, my words in abide in you, ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. The third evidence uh, uh, of abidance with Christ is our prayers will be answered. When we abide in Christ, our prayers will be answered. That is one condition. The fourth evidence is, we read in verse 9, As the Father hath loved me, so I have loved you. Continue you in my love. Verse 12, This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. This is the fourth evidence to say, that brother or the sister is abiding in Christ. That is, he will be having deepening love. He will have a deepening love to Christ and fellow believers. Dear brothers and sister, if you really abide in the Lord Jesus Christ, we will love him. We will love the Lord Jesus Christ and we will give first place to Lord Jesus. We will love the word of God. And read and have them meditate the word of God. And have the family prayers every day. And also we will love the house of God. You see, David, what David says, because he abides with Christ, with God, he says, 
I love the house of God. Psalms 26 verse 8. Psalm 26 verse 8. David says, I have loved, Lord, I loved the habitation of the house and the place where thine honor dwelleth. Lord, I loved the habitation of the house. Dear brothers and sisters, if we love the Lord Jesus, we will also love the word of God. We will also love the house of God. We will be waiting when the Lord, when the Lord's day will come, when the Lord's day will come, that I will go to the house of God and have fellowship and worship the Lord Jesus and participate in the Lord's table and have fellowship with one another. Dear brothers and sisters, in these days, many of people of God have lost their hunger and thirst to the house of God. Many times uh, people stay at home itself, not coming to the house of God. But we'll see what David says. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of God. Psalm 122 verse 1. So, this is the fourth evidence to say that brother or sister is abiding in Christ. And the fifth evidence is that brother or that sister will experience the heavenly joy, the joy of the Lord Jesus. Verse 11. These things I have spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, that your joy might be full. So when we abide in Christ, we will experience the peculiar joy, the joy of the Lord, the heavenly joy. Jesus said, my joy, I will give unto you my joy. This is heavenly joy, which no man can take it away from us. This is joy that does not depend upon our, our worldly position or worldly position. This joy is a heavenly joy. So, the sixth evidence to say that brother or sister is abiding in Christ is that he will not sin. He will not continue in sin. First John chapter 3 verse 6. First John chapter 3 verse 6. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Dear best and sister, this is also very important evidence to say that we are abiding in Christ. We will not dare enough to continue with sin, fall into sin. Even if we fall into sin, we will get up and get away, run away from sin like Joseph. As believers, we should not live in sin. And the seventh evidence is 1 John chapter 1, 2, 1 John chapter 2, verse 6. That is, that brother or sister who abides in Christ, he will live like Christ. That is a very important evidence to say that brother or sister is abiding in Christ. Verse 6, <clears throat> 1 John chapter 2, verse 6. He that saith abideth in him, but hot himself also, so to walk as he walked. So, we have to walk, we have to live as the law of our Lord Jesus Christ lived upon his world. Lived upon his world. Others, non-Christians, unbelievers, the worldly believer, worldly people must see Christ in our life. In so much so, we must walk as Christ walked in his world. So these are the seven fold evidence to say that brother or sister is, uh, is uh, uh, abiding with Christ. And uh, then uh, thirdly we see, uh, fourthly we see uh, fruit. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth fruit, much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Fruit. Here, fruit represents so many things. There are so many things that in the word of God we see. Uh, uh, see, uh, we see the uh, 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 first of all, we see the fruit of the spirit. Galatians chapter two, Galatians chapter two, verse twenty-two to twenty-three. We read the fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit must be seen in us: love, joy, peace, long suffering, 
gentleness, forbearing one another, dear brothers and sisters. This is the fruit the Lord wants us. Secondly, Romans chapter 1 verse 13, winning soul for Christ is compared to a fruit. Thirdly, Romans chapter 6 verse 22, we see holiness. Growing in holiness is compared to a fruit. Then Romans chapter uh, 15 verse 25, helping poor believers. Helping poor believers, Apostle Paul says it is a fruit. Romans chapter 15 verse 25. Romans chapter 15 verse uh, 25. But now I go to Jerusalem to minister unto the saints. For it hath pleased them of Macedonia, Achaia, to make a certain contribution for the poor saints which are at Jerusalem. Verse 28. When therefore I have performed this, I have sealed to them this fruit. Kindly note, Apostle Paul is telling this fruit. What is that? Helping poor believers. Here, Apostle Paul has collected a lot of money from the saints at Macedonia and Achaia for the poor believers in Jerusalem. Dear brothers and sisters, helping the poor believers, needy people, Apostle Paul says, it is a fruit. And then, fifthly, good work. Colossians chapter 1, verse 10, where there we see Good works is a fruit. Dear brothers and sisters, we are created in Christ to do good works, not evil work. Many Christians, many believers do evil work, not only in the place where they live, but also in the house of God. Many believers doing evil work. We are created unto good works. Lastly and sixthly, the fruit of our lips, the praise, Praising God, worshipping God is the fruit of our lips. So these are the fruits. So my dear brothers and sisters, we have seen four things in this, uh, in this uh, allegory. First of all, the wine dresser, the God the Father, he purges us. Secondly, we have seen the wine, Jesus Christ is our true wine. We must abide in him. And thirdly, we have seen the branches. We are the branches and he is the wine. What is our great purpose? As a branch, the great purpose is bearing fruit. And fourth, you have seen the fruit. Dear brothers and sisters, our Lord Jesus Christ is the true wine. We are the branches. What is our responsibility? Our responsibility is bearing fruit. Abiding, abiding with Christ and bearing the fruit for the glory of God. May God help us fruit bearing uh, Christians. May God bless this word to us this, this morning.